Hello and welcome back. In this video, we're going to continue talking about Burp Suite and some of advanced functionalities in Burp Suite. In previous video, we talked about some basic functionalities. There are other functionalities in Burp Suite, and we're going to talk about two advanced ones in this video, Burp Intruder and Burp Repeater. We could initiate payload attacks some attacks like brute force attacks using Burp Intruder. And we could modify HTTP requests, header, parameters, and so on with Burp Repeater and send the packet to the target. Let's see how it works in action. Just moving to my Kali Linux and log in with my username and password. First thing we're going to do is just run Burp Suite. Again, this is the free version of Burp Suite, so it's a temporary project, which is fine. We just started. The first thing I'm going to do on Burp Suite is to go to the proxy section and disable intercept on Burp Suite. The reason to do that is I don't want to intercept the traffic in real time. I don't want to change the traffic in real time and I don't want to keep coming back here and click on forward button all the time. I want the traffic to be discovered but I don't want to necessarily interact with the traffic. So once I do that I go back and run Firefox First thing we're going to do, we need to make sure that the Firefox has the right proxy settings and make sure that the traffic is actually sent to Burp Suite. And as you can see, the local proxy port 8080 is already there. Now we're going to browse to our EVWA machine. So as soon as you do that, it should be discovered on our burp suite. We just go back to the burp suite and the target section and you see the application is being discovered. So I'm going to log in my default credentials and when we go back you see that there are more URLs available because I logged into the application. If you log in look at the login URL, you see that the parameters that are used to log in have been discovered. And I'm going to click on some of the URLs here to discover them on Burp Suite. The main one that I'm going to use as part of this test is brute force. If I go back to my burp suite and the vulnerabilities. You see that the brute force section has been discovered here, but there is not much information yet. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to type a username and password. It doesn't have to be the actual username and password. It could be any username and password just to tell burp suite uh, and basically inform Burp Suite about parameters that are used as part of this section. And if I click OK, you see that the user and password is incorrect, which is fine, but it's already discovered by Burp Suite. I go back there. And you see, I can expand it now. And there we go. So this is the URL that I just used on brute force section of the application. So if you look at the parameters, you see there's username, password, and login. What I'm going to test now, I'm going to initiate a brute force attack on this URL and find out the username and password, assuming that we don't know the username and password for this URL, right? And it is vulnerable to this type of attack. 
So I'm just going to right, right click on the URL and send it to intruder. As soon as I do that, that become orange, as you can see over there, I just click on there. So the first thing you're going to see is the positions tab. Let's change that to the cluster bomb to initiate the uh, brute force attack. There are some highlighted sections here, as you can see on the screen. These highlighted sections are basically the variables that we could use as part of our brute force attack. So with the brute force attack, we're going to need the username and the password, but we're not going to use any other parameters that are highlighted there. So I'm just going to go and select the ones that we don't need and clear. So you see that has been removed. And the other one also, I select the other one and clear. And select the last one, clear as well. So now we only have the value for username and the value for password. The way that it works is it would assign a number to any of these values. So the first one would be number one and the second one would be number two. So once we've done this, we go to the payload section. As you can see with the payload set, we got two numbers. The first one refers to username and the second one refers to password. We're going to select the first one. As you can see on the payload type, you can select different files, different lists or different options. If you want to initiate a more complex brute force attack, you might want to use a file or you might want to use a complex list or you might want to load a list into here. For now, I'm just going to test this with a list of usernames manually. So I'm going to type some usernames that I want to test the URL against. Admin2, Admin3, and Admin. So these are the three usernames that I want to test. But as you can imagine, if it is a real valid scenario, you possibly want to have a longer list here. For password, we do the same. Pass one, pass two, and password. So now we have a list for usernames and we have a list for passwords. We start the attack. It's just prompting about the free version of perp, which is fine. <coughs> As you can see, different usernames and different passwords are tested and they're passed. And the first thing that actually is detectable here, the difference in lens for the last row, admin and password, which is the real username and password. So that just shows, well, maximize this, that just shows this last one is the valid username and password that could be used to log into the system and the rest are incorrect. So that's how you initiate a brute force attack on a URL if that URL is vulnerable using brute force, uh, using burp suite. So the next thing we're going to talk about is the repeater. So we're going to go back to our target URLs. 
select a URL that you can see here. <coughs> right click and send it to repeater. So repeater is where we can change the parameters and change the header settings while we're sending the HTTP request and simulate how it's going to look like on a browser. So as you can see that it has been sent to the repeater, the parameter section, we could change the parameters here, the header section, we could change the header here. If I click on go, you see the response and how the response looks like and what are the headers of the response and how the page is going to look like. What I could do, I could literally change anything that I want here. I could change the user agent to another user agent. I could change the host. I could change the HTTP request. I could change any of these header options or parameters and see how that would impact the response of the HTTP. So that would be very useful when we are going into too much detail of playing with HTTP requests and trying to get information from the server to see whether it is vulnerable or not. So that would be the repeater section and how it works. So you can basically change on ad hoc basis and view how the response looks like at the same time. On the next section, we're going to talk about securing web applications. I hope you enjoyed this section. Thank you for watching and I will be with you in the next one.